Coming up, Butterbean. Next watch you go. Larry Holmes still Here comes Butterbean. He's right away. Today, I'll tell you about one of them, how Larry Holmes faced off against a real 350-pound knockout machine. This story took place in the distant year of 2002 when, at the age of 52, Larry Holmes had his final bout against the cult hero, the one and only king of the four-rounders Eric Esch, better known as Butterbean, thus concluding his career on a high note, as he rightfully earned. So be sure to watch this video to the end and don't forget to hit that like button. One of the most talented boxers of the 20th century had the fate to live and fight in the ring almost at the same time as the great Muhammad Ali. And that pretty much sums it up. He remained in the shadow of the greatest for a lifetime. This victory turned out to be a real farce. But Holmes got a new incentive, another great boxer, Rocky Marciano, left the ring with a record of 49-0 at his time. And Holmes managed to extend his record to 48-0. There was just one step left, the goal was about to be achieved. And again, on Larry's way to the coveted record, he encountered Michael Spinks, who in September 1985 not only shattered all his dreams and hopes, winning by unanimous decision, but also defeated Holmes again in a rematch. Larry was so devastated that he temporarily left boxing. He returned only in January 1988. He returned to face the young Mike Tyson in his very first fight. Mike didn't give the well-deserved veteran any chances and knocked out Holmes in the fourth round. Next was a victory over Ray Mercer, who then suffered his first career defeat. Then Larry lost to world champions Evander Holyfield and Oliver McCall. And in 1997, he lost to Brian Nielsen, which was not good at all. However, every veteran deserves respect, especially if they stay in the game. Now, imagine something very white, almost a perfect cubic shape, standing at 5 feet 11 inches and weighing no less than 350 pounds. Now, picture this moving around the ring, breathing heavily, yet hitting, hitting quite well and accurately. His head actually turned around backwards. This was Butterbean, the reigning champion of his own super heavyweight weight class, a title he invented for himself. Butterbean even had a championship belt that he proudly displayed during his tours across the United States. Many people in America whose lives were in some way connected to boxing would get furious at the mere mention of Butterbean's name, believing that he was profaning the high art, turning it into a circus for public amusement. Could Eric Esch, a simple factory worker from Alabama in 1991, imagine that a decade later he would generate such interest by boxing against Larry Holmes and seriously challenging Mike Tyson? In 1991, this brawler and tough guy, Eric, became the winner of the Tough Man Street Fighters competition. In his younger years, Eric weighed a bit more 434 pounds. Then followed a strict regimen, a diet mostly consisting of Carolina beans and chicken, allowing him to trim down to a fighting weight of 335 to 341 pounds. The mockery that Butterbean had never spent more than four rounds in a ring in his life to avoid a heart attack didn't faze him at all. He set goals for himself and achieved them. But Butterbean appealed to many, primarily through his hard work, care for family, and children. Despite being overweight, he had the right kind of character determined and tenacious. Then came his career as a touring boxer, gradually gaining somewhat scandalous popularity, and now the Larry Holmes as his opponent. 
The year was 2002 and Butterbean was enjoying popularity in boxing, despite having a peculiar and supported career, despite winning and defeating opponents who were novices or had losing records. However, Destiny had his big test in store for him to face a true legend of the heavyweight division, Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes never could say no to a buck, just like plenty of fighters. Holmes, who gave us some great quotes during his great ring career, I grew up dirt poor and now I'm filthy rich, once said that any man who says he is not fighting for money is either stupid or he is lying. Holmes pulled in some massive paydays during his career, most deservedly, and the manner in which he left his chosen sport was also a right he had more than earned. And Larry saw an earner being dangled before him in what turned out to be his final fight. On the night of the fight, the atmosphere was electric as the two fighters entered the ring. The gong sounds, the battle has begun. Holmes showcased his legendary jab, keeping Butterbean at bay and scoring points with clean, effective punches. A long time if he's a banger, but Holmes did it with his jab. Butterbean able to make his entrance as he takes a shot and then lands behind the head. Just started out looking like, oh, there's the one. Best thing for Butterbean is that he was able to show that. Butterbean loathed to rush him much, and actually the crowd getting out of him this fight. About a minute left to go, overhand. Butterbean got a little respect with the power that he used in the first round against Larry Holmes. Here's Holmes showing a little bit of that. Butterbean himself was over the moon to step into the ring against Larry Holmes. However, Butterbean was relentless, constantly pressing forward and looking for opportunities to land his powerful hooks and uppercuts. definition of the word yeah. tying up now in this fight he would have landed a lot more jab yeah. face maybe some blood and he come at butterbean more he he was there and they're both waiting that we're on two entirely different skill levels yeah. much like the first couple where uh, he's waiting to pull the trigger there did a home but it was it was short that one got a surprise butterbean the difference in the white trunks, Butterbean now, if, as we get past this round, we will reach if Larry Holmes is mixing up his jabs. Concession to Butterbean, a big experience, concession from Butterbean to Holmes. Well now, you know, tying up Butterbean every time he's had, he will land out here. There's a left hook by Larry Holmes. Hey, there's a throw in this round. Got a right hand. Got done against the 52-year-old. Yeah, the ironic part is, he's kind of like watching a, a mural. Larry Holmes gets the jab in, Butterbean has to regroup. He's going to throw his right hand without waiting to start. There's a little swelling in Butterbean. Really makes him have to gamble more. Larry Holmes. Here comes Butterbean, he's way alive. Cut over the... And now look at Holmes like a laser beam. That jab is on that... The redness is a target. The way Barbie's coming in, the way it has to come in, those In the sixth round, Holmes found himself well and truly on the ropes, backed into the corner as Butterbean threw his bombs. Fortunately for him, he managed to escape before his rival could land a knockout blow. When Holmes managed to land a precise right punch, Butterbean seemed to hardly feel it, but Eric did get a cut above his left eye. Larry Holmes heads back in against an unprotected eye and the right hand, no match at all. Despite the fact that the veteran's age noticeably affected the fight, since Larry was already 52 years old at that time, this did not stop the champion from attacking and responded with dignity. But now he's facing the guy skills for Butterbean. All Butterbean was able to do was walk forward and look for an opening. But it never came. Better to lose by a knockout in which you took a stand. The worst scenario. Almost halfway through this round. There's Butterbean rushing in. He can't complain 
too much because it's not as if they have not really done much. There's another one. Better be asked to reload and then fire. You have to knock this man out. The only way you're going to do it is. Good example. Rice is in the ninth round. He's never been that far. Enough to go after him a little bit. Larry Holmes is really nailing him with the jab. Foreman takes two steps back and then lands a perfect foil for that. Butter B would be it. Has so many different ways to fight. Get back. Larry Holmes up. The left hook comes up a bit short. And the hoping that he can force Holmes to make a mistake. This is the place they had to try to take his career. I, may I add, one's better than Butterbean looked bad. He's doing it again tonight. The comical aspect was heightened by a knockdown that supposedly occurred half a minute before the end of the fight. Here's how it happened. Larry moved around the ring, stumbled slightly over his own foot, and leaned against the ropes. The referee, who seemed lost in his thoughts, suddenly snapped back and began to count for Holmes, who was laughing openly. Looks like he will go out a winner. Oh, left hook! Sends Holmes down! That's called the knockdown appropriately! Assume that was after the punch. Let's take a look. Guess what? That Raising was in shot. Let's see. Let's hit there. You know what? No. Uh-uh, not, not a knockdown. Down. The outcome of the fight was a predictable victory for Holmes by unanimous decision. It's worth noting that despite the somewhat grotesque and unserious nature of this fight, the earnings were real, Holmes received $250,000 for the bout, and Butterbean's compensation amounted to $100,000. The man who famously beat Ali to retain his WBC heavyweight title in 1980 then stepped away from the sport, finishing with a pro record of 69-6. He remains one of the most iconic figures in the history of boxing. Butterbean, 55, carried on for another 11 years, ending his career after losing to Kirk Lawton in Australia. That left him with a record of 77 wins, 10 losses, and 4 draws. But as well as boxing, the TV celebrity has had numerous bouts in wrestling, kickboxing, and MMA. Friends, write about which of today's fighters we should make the next issue about. And don't forget to like. Thanks.